this week on NHRA Today. The thrill is back at the head of the top fuel pack, while Cowboy Powick rides tall in the Arizona desert. Pedragon is phenomenal with Phoenix Bunnies and taking a quiet approach to Cop Eliminator. From PSI Superchargers in Tempe, Arizona, these stories and more on this edition of NHRA Today. Drag racing first discovered supercharging around 1958. Those early units were stock GMC 671 blowers, first used on two-stroke marine diesel engines in World War II, and later on over-the-road vehicles. Early blower drives turned the units at or below engine speed. Now 60% or more overdrive is not uncommon. The supercharger changed the face of drag racing forever. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of NHRA Today. I'm Steve Evans. For over 30 years, other than growing in size and the ability to deliver air, there really wasn't any major supercharging breakthroughs until 1988, when Norm Drazy, the founder of PSI here in Tempe, Arizona, unveiled his screw-type supercharger. In the next half hour, you'll meet Norm, and we'll talk about supercharging in general and the PSI unit in particular. But first, of course, other than the Arizona sunshine, we got to find out what's hot. NASCAR driver Jeff Bodine shifted gears and served as Grand Marshal for the Motocraft Ford Nationals. This is my second drag race in my whole life. I mean, I'm, I'm totally in awe of what these guys do. Uh, this is really exciting. And, you know, we're used to the NASCAR and, and going around in circles, and that's all great. It's very exciting, but this is pure horsepower here. This is awesome. Pat Austin showed us why he is still the top gun of the alcohol funny car ranks. En route to his 51st career win, he set both ends of the national record by running an elapsed time of 5.82 seconds at over 241 miles per hour. How about that, you know? One, one minute is from the outhouse to the penthouse. I mean, these, these makes, that's what makes these occasions so nice. Pat is one of only two racers to ever win in two classes at a national event. The other is Edmund Richardson. Taking the Arizona honors in both Super Street and Super Comp marks the second time Edmund has accomplished this feat. And that's what's hot. As advertised, meet supercharger guru Norm Drazy. And Norm, this is the good old girl, the 671 GMC case. Yeah, Steve, this was the mainstay of drag racing through about 1975. Uh, it was really the only supercharger in use until Larry Bowers figured out how to put 871 rotors in it that were 7 eighths longer. And the immediate result was a 563 by Don Garlitz at uh, the World Finals in Ontario. And it didn't stop growing there. Oh, no, it was headed for the moon. Finally, the NHRA decided that 19 inches was about as long as it ought to get. And they stopped it right there and called it the 1471. And some improvements inside as well. Yes, that's right. Don Hampton was really the one that attacked the leakage problem by putting abradable Teflon and Nylatron tip strips where the rotors touch each other in the case to cut the leakage down. Every Nitro Funny Car in action this past weekend in Phoenix had this size supercharger. Here's Dave McClellan's report. Probably the most appropriate funny car to come to Phoenix for the Motorcraft Ford Nationals was the in and out Burger Daytona of Mark Oswald, which rose from the ashes of an inferno suffered at Pomona one week earlier to qualify fifth. Everybody in the Overhill gang worked real hard. Fortunately, we had a lot of manpower, and fortunately, Tom Hoover was there and was willing to lend us his body, which we still have here this weekend. Mark's opponent in round one was Wyatt Radke, who also had experienced a qualifying incident at Pomona. And as the two cars raced down track, Oswald seemed headed for victory until his engine failed, giving a come-from-behind upset win to the Wesco Dodge. Wyatt Radke was then defeated in round number two by Del Worsham, who then faced the number one qualifier, Cruz Pedregon, in the final four. The McDonald's Oldsmobile had run in the low five teens all day, but against Worsham, the car dropped off the pace to a still respectable 520 that was enough to claim the win. The other side of the ladder featured some round two fireworks from Al Hoffman's lower drive services Dodge Daytona, which first took the win over John Force's Castro Lowell's then burst into flame after one of the most severe engine explosions ever. Al battled his flaming flopper through the shutdown area and into the desert, where he miraculously emerged from the smoke and fire. 
With such severe damage, Al was forced to miss his Final Four meeting with Jim Epler, who carried the Rug Doctor colors into the final round against Pedregon. Just after the cars left the line, Epler's Daytona slowed, granting an unchallenged win to the reigning Winston champion. And the car was on about a 515 pass, and then about 1,000 foot, the blower belt broke, so uh, just killed the motor. So I looked over and was hoping that Epler wouldn't come by me, but he didn't, so that was great. Cruz now finds himself atop the Winston point standings ahead of John Force, followed by Del Worsham, Al Hoffman, and Jim Epler. I must have been a machinist in another life. I am so fascinated that you can take a solid hunk of magnesium like this and turn it into the innards of a PSI supercharger. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll talk about this unit and we'll have more action from the Motorcraft Ford Nationals. NHRA Today is brought to you by Castrol Syntec, the new synthetic oil that protects in ways other oils can't. Inside your smooth-running engine is a torture chamber. And under these grueling conditions, only one leading motor oil in every grade meets the world's toughest requirements for viscosity breakdown. Castrol. Castrol provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol. After all, why make things tougher on your engine? Castrol GTX. Engineered for today's smaller cars. Son, what do you think of when you think of Florida? Florida orange juice and me, right? No, just Florida orange juice. Oh, well, I'm going to be the official spokesman for Florida orange juice, and I'm perfect for it. I think I'm perfect for it. It's full of vitamin C and minerals. There's pure, natural, get up and go in every glass, 100%. Pure Florida orange juice will get you on your feet. That's my line. Just be cute. Okay, go ahead and try it. 100% pure Florida orange juice. Get you on your feet. Trust me, Dad. I'll sell it. You do the cute part. Dave Thomas is making a new chicken sandwich for his favorite customer, his daughter Wendy. Introducing Wendy's Monterey Ranch Chicken, a whole breast fillet topped with cheese, but not just any cheese, Monterey Jack. Then he whipped up a favorite dressing, creamy ranch loaded with bacon. It was so good, he kind of hated to give it away. Wendy, it's ready. Oh well, I guess I'll have to eat it myself. Try Wendy's new Monterey Ranch Chicken Sandwich. Dad, is it ready yet? Sweetheart! <laughs> Your first big snow, Joey! Here you come. Joey doesn't care that inside is the world's most energy-efficient oh, furnace. Here he comes, here he comes. Or that Carrier can save up to 40% annually on heating. Look at him. He loves it. All he cares about is how warm and comfy Carrier keeps it inside. Hey, Joe? If you care about energy efficiency and saving money, call your Carrier Joey. dealer. Now, turn the knob, Joey. Carrier, we're the inside guys. We're back in Tempe, Arizona. Norm Drazy, exactly how does your PSI screw type supercharger work? Actually, Steve, it works very much like a roots blower. Right. The big difference is that it takes air occupying this space and it compresses it down to this space before it encounters the manifold pressure. Mm -hmm. If you look very carefully here, you can really see where the pie shaped opening in the housing evolves. The size of the pie shaped opening determines how much pressure the air is raised in the blower. And this is what's responsible for cutting the power consumption. So even though you turn it faster, it takes, what, half the horsepower to operate? That's right, Steve. These units consume about 450 versus 900 horsepower. Now, the PSI is approved only for use in the alcohol classes, but right now, we've got Dave McClellan with the top fuel report from Phoenix. One of the hottest runners in top fuel last week at the Motorcraft Ford Nationals was the La Victoria Salsa Dragster, driven by Mike Dunn, who qualified fourth. An impressive performance for a team that just came into existence. We didn't have a whole lot of time to do any testing. The contracts were signed about January 10th, and uh, we came here, and everything's going pretty good. Uh, 486 so far, and uh, the car's running good, and the driver's starting to learn how to drive, and I think we'll be okay. With team owner Daryl Gwynn now serving as crew chief, both men had to make adjustments. I'm still a little off. Uh, my rash times are still a little bit off. They're going to get better as we go along. Uh, Daryl's learned how to tune. I'm, I'm learning how to drive. Mike met up in the first round with Pat Austin, and at the green, he showed his reaction time skills were sharpening up. But then the car slowed with problems, and the Castrol Syntec machine cruised to victory. Pat then set aside Doug Herbert in a second-round rematch of last year's finalists. In the final four against Jim Head, who had knocked off number one qualifier Corey McLenathan, Austin scored a bizarre victory. 
just after the green. Pat's engine burst into flames and lit up the entire quarter mile, while Head's car slowed when the parachute prematurely deployed. The championship round was a battle between the ages, as Pat faced veteran Eddie Hill in the Pennzoil nuclear banana, and Eddie struck a blow for the over-50 set by leaving on his young rival to take a popular victory. We didn't run good enough, really, to where we should have won that deal, but we did. We just had a lot of luck today, and uh, I'll take it because we've had a lot of the other kind, and sooner or later it kind of evens up. Eddie's win launches him to second in the Winston Point standings behind Joe Amato, while Kenny Bernstein, Corey McLenathan, and Doug Herbert complete the top five. Superchargers are manufactured for the sole purpose of creating horsepower. But all the horsepower in the world won't help you go quicker or faster if you can't put it to the ground. There's an interesting new chassis out there that may help one racer do just that. Here is this week's Fast Fact with Frank Hawley. Top fuel drag racer Jim Head has always marched to the beat of a different drummer. His cars never look like anyone else's. He's had this large front wing on the car for a couple years has a front end with a very narrow tread width and tall front wheels. But last year, Jim was plagued with major wheel stand problems. In fact, he made a four second run at a race with a front end two feet in the air. Now that's not safe, and it certainly isn't the fastest way down the racetrack. To combat that problem, on this year's car, Jim's done a couple things. The first thing he did was move the engine a long ways out from the rear end housing. You can see how far he moved it by the length of the drive shaft. Then he moved the driver's compartment further out than most cars, and you can see how far out it is by the distance between the engine and the driver's compartment. The idea here is he's putting a lot of weight on the front end to try and keep it from wheel standing. Now, conventional wisdom would tell us if you put the weight on the front end, it's taking it off the back end, and that may cause a tire smoking problem. Well, initially, Jim's had some tire smoking problems, but he feels that that may be easier to cure than a wheel stand problem. Castrol presents the GTX Pipeline, the latest news from the world of drag racing. The secret in any form of motorsports is to turn as many variables into constants as you possibly can. In the Corey Max pits, they're doing just that with fuel mixture and temperature. Now, the alcohol is in the jug, the nitrous in the 55-gallon drum. It all flows into this brand-new, one-of-a-kind device designed by Steve Greenfall. How does it work? What's happening? What we're doing is taking the nitromethane from the drum, filling the machine, temperature controlling to a specific temperature that we're looking for, and then injecting alcohol with the hydrometer's aid to control specific gravity. During this time, we're filling the race car continuously and temperature controlling the fuel in the race car tank so as to maintain consistency throughout this operation. All right, here today, you're looking for uh, 70 degrees. You've got it set on 70. Exactly. And over at the race car, we know that's exactly what you have. Exactly. We have the 70 degrees, and we are soaking the temperature into the fuel tank so that when we disconnect, the insulation in the fuel tank will keep the temperature consistent while the car is waiting. Hey, I like to save money as much as the next guy, but what are the odds that there's going to be a sale on the part you need when your car breaks down? Hey, it's not going to happen. That's why I go to AutoZone. I mean, sure, you could wait around for a couple weeks and maybe beat their price by a few pennies someplace else, but I don't want to wait for a sale when I need a part. Now, what more could you ask for? My dandruff shampoo is good. Better try something else. Mine really works. You'd better try something else, like Selsun Blue. Doctors recommend it more than all leading brands. Selsun Blue, doctor recommended number one. Unbelievable. Spectacular. Breathtaking. Crash impact. 60 minutes of blazing crash action in this special edition two-volume set. See outrageous motocross and road racing action. Sensational Indy cars, Grand Prix, NASCAR, monster trucks, power boats, and more. Only $19.95. This exclusive two-tape set is jam-packed with magnificent racing and crash action footage featuring top drivers from around the world. Order now and get absolutely free. Havoc 1 has 45 minutes of rare footage, including some of the most thrilling and horrifying moments that made early racing history. You'll get this incredible two-tape offer, plus your Havoc video free. Three tapes that'll blow you away. 
guaranteed or your money back. To order, call toll-free 1-800-544-6664. That's 1-800-544-6664. Or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $3.95 for shipping and handling. Get primed for prime cuts in prime time. Video Prime every weeknight at 7 Eastern on TNN. It's not your father's video show. TNN's gonna turn you on with On Stage. This is all I see. Country music's hottest acts heat up the stage for a 30-minute music meltdown. You have the right to fit my insanity. You wear me out. A hot legs you can scream. Turn on to On Stage, Tuesday through Thursday nights at 10.30 Eastern on TNN. I love you, honey. NHRA Today acknowledges a promotional consideration provided for and a fee paid by EXQ Exquisite Designs whose custom embroidery sets you apart from the crowd. Call 1-800-525-2444 to begin work on your needs in racing apparel. Welcome back to PSI near Phoenix, Arizona. Norm, a product as complicated as the PSI screw type supercharger offers some real machining challenges. Oh yeah, it's been really fun to, to conquer this thing. Um, really what we've tried to do is bring as much of the processing in-house as we can that way we have control over not only the quality, but also the scheduling. I mean, if we need a part the next day, we can stay here all night and make it. And computers are a big part of the process. Oh, Steve, they're absolutely wonderful. You make one on a manual machine, you find out how it works, that's indispensable. But if you've got to make a batch of them, computers don't get bored. They do exactly the same thing every time. You know, it's time now for our sportsman report. Doesn't have a darn thing to do with superchargers, but we have achieved the seemingly impossible. We have muffled Bob Fry. Be very quiet. If I talk too loud, I'll be louder in this race car. We actually have a car running here with mufflers on. You know who it is? I'll give you a hint. It's an A dragster from the West Coast, and his name rhymes with orange. You give up? It's Steve Bunyard. Okay, so I lied about the orange, but I didn't lie about the mufflers. In fact, this Division 7 racer has become a forerunner in softening the sound of drag racing. Borla approached us on it, and we were skeptical at first, but Greg did some dyno testing with it, and we found that it didn't hurt the numbers one bit, peak power or peak torque on the dyno. So we decided to give the mufflers a try at the track, and actually last year at Phoenix and the World Finals, our best ETs were with the mufflers on the car. So this weekend, we're going to leave them on for every run. I don't really know much about the technology of it. It has something to do with the way the uh, sound waves are pulsed and the way it helps scavenge the exhaust. and. It seems to work. I don't really understand why, but uh, the car's running well. After going to a muffler, the former national record holder had to make some changes in his driving style. I've had to learn how to drive the car all over again because I can't hear the engine anymore. We've had to put a shift light on the car for the first time. I used to shift by ear. Now I can't hear the engine, so I'm having to rely on the shift light to shift it. And like many new innovations in racing, this one has created a lot of interest. I think we're going to see more and more interest as this thing develops. A lot of the tracks around the country do face a noise problem, and not only in drag racing, but sprint car and other forms of racing, too. So uh, I think these are going to be a big advantage in the future. Steve made some noise in comp for a while, but he fell victim to Ron Fisher's better reaction time in round two. And despite the loss, Bunyard's dragster has opened some eyes, and maybe some ears. Now the comp final pitted the Lumina of Tony Chaperoni in the far lane against two-time former Winston champion Bill Moropoulos. Tony won this one right off the starting line, and he picked up his first national win in his 20-year career. I'm just so excited I'm speechless. I mean, we're going to enjoy this. So I might just fly to Vegas and not go home for a week. Now, here are the rest of the winners from the Motorcraft Ford Nationals. For NHRA Today, I'm Bob Crazy Mike. You can't muffle me, right? And yeah. to the looks of things, you can't muffle that chaperone crew either. And now, Red Wing Shoes wants to take a moment to tell you who's hot in the world of drag racing. Last season at the 92 Motorcraft Nationals, Tiffany Hyland finished a close second to eventual Winston champion Blaine Johnson. At this year's season opener at Pomona, Tiffany saw the winner's light come on in the other lane when Brooks Brown defeated her. But at this race, she would not be denied. 
as she took out some heavy hitters, including Johnson and Division Six rival Jay Payne in the final. After coming so close twice before, this win marked her first ever since moving into the alcohol ranks. Oh, I am so excited. I can't believe it. I think I'll sleep all night. <laughs> Congratulations to Tiffany Highland. And be sure to keep watching next week when Red Wing Shoes will again tell you who's hot in the world of drag racing. Here, they specialize in supercharging your race car. Here, they specialize in supercharging your racing knowledge. This is National Dragster Magazine, one of the many benefits of a membership in the National Hot Rod Association. For $52 a year, you get 48 issues of Dragster, a pen, a patch, a decal, a lot of other goodies. And if you call the number on your screen right now, you'll get your choice absolutely free of the Diamond P Video Drag Racing 91 or the hot new NHRA t-shirt. So make that call. The call's even free. And make plans to join us next weekend at the Slick 50 Nationals, Houston Raceway Park. One of these engines was filled with Castrol Syntec, a new synthetic oil. The rest with conventional oils. They were then drained and started without oil to proof a point. You see Syntec's unique molecular structure bonds to engine parts. That test show it leaves a layer of protection far stronger than conventional oil. And if Syntec protects this well now, imagine if you leave it in. Castrol Syntec protects in ways other oils can't. It's the lifeblood of your engine. That makes your oil filter your engine's most vital organ. That's why Fran keeps going the extra mile to make the best protection even better. The Fram Extra Guard Oil Filter. Unique glass fiber paper stops more dirt than any other filter for the best protection ever. Fram Extra Guard, American or import, it's an extra lease on life. My uh, truck has uh, 99,000 miles on it, and it's like, a, it's like a brand new engine. America is talking about split fire. I feel like I have a new engine. No hesitation. You hit your passing gear, you're gone. Right now. Split fire won a United States patent. It doesn't look like any other spark plug. It doesn't work like any other spark plug. I love them. I have them on my motorcycle, my boat, and my car. I love them. I love them. Split fire. At $5.99, America knows it only costs more till you use it. I can say I've saved at least 3 to $4 a week. I use the lower octane now. Um, it seems like it runs like I had the, the premium in there. I'm probably getting, um, I would say, about 20 miles more uh, per tank full, and that's a lot for me. They'll pay for themselves, basically, in the first six months you own them. Split fire. It only costs more till you use it. Get guaranteed split fire savings at leading automotive stores from coast to coast. This is TNN, the Nashville Network, the number one source for country music, entertainment, and information. Welcome back to Arizona. In that the PSI is a larger package, they also manufacture here a low-profile fuel injector hat so that the overall height is about the same. Now, the screw-type blower is a heavier package. It costs about 40% more at $5,900. But you should only have to own one of these, and it should run virtually maintenance-free all season, even if you bang it a couple of times. Now, this is not going to replace this in the near future, but it is an interesting alternative. And speaking of alternatives, here again is Dave McClellan with his report on the most popular non-supercharged class, Pro Stock. The Motorcraft Ford Nationals featured a pair of prominent Pro Stock names meeting in the first round. Glidden versus Johnson. But instead of Bob and Warren, it was Rusty against Kurt. It's good for the fans. You know, they, they like to see the, the names carry on. And because, uh, you know, these, these old guys aren't going to be out here forever. We stepped into a new car. Uh, Scribner Brothers supplied me with a Willie Rails car this weekend. I'm just totally excited. Both second generation speedsters divide their time between the cockpit and the pit. While Rusty tends to the pair of Motorcraft probes, Kurt is crew chief for Don Beverly's Oles when he isn't occupied with the preparation of his racer. Yet both are able to adjust when it is time to put down their tools and put on their helmets. You can think about what you're going to do, but once you're in the car, it's totally different. I'll have to be ready, and I'll tell him he has to be ready, so it'll be exciting. As the light flashed green, Rusty responded with a near-perfect reaction time. But as the cars worked through the gears, the famous Johnson horsepower propelled Kurt ahead for the win and a spot in the final four against Scott Jeffreyon. 
The Mopar driver knew he needed a quick light to stay with Kurt, but Scott left the line too soon and fouled, giving another round win to the Torco Oles, but then came disaster. As Kurt attempted to slow down, his car broke away and began a frightening chain of events that ended with the car slamming into a retaining wall. Kurt was attended to by the safety safari, with Rusty Glidden on hand, lending moral support to his rival. Kurt was checked out and released with only minor bruises. In the final round, Mark Powick met up with Larry Morgan in a clash of cutlasses, and Morgan left the line first in the super clean machine, only to be chased down by Powick's fast closing summit entry. I gotta give all the credit to Dave Butner, my crew chief, who's just done a tremendous job working hard over the winter to get us some extra horsepower, and uh, we're looking forward to many more to come, I hope, this year. Mark's win propels him to second in the Winston points chase behind Warren Johnson, with Scott Jeffrey on, Kurt Johnson, and Larry Morgan in close pursuit. In addition to the racing we saw on the track, there was another interesting competition at Firebird this past weekend. Students from over 40 schools throughout the state participated in the first annual Arizona High School Pit Crew Challenge. By putting five kids together, it would give them a chance to, to work together as a team, as, you know, put a unit together, and, and do some real good things for the schools. Now, the challenge was designed to make students aware of career opportunities in the automotive industry. Well, this is a great competition. I've seen the enthusiasm of the students, even in their other classwork, uh, escalate. The competition is great for the students, and it also gives them knowledge of uh, What's going on in the real world? Bondurant technicians supervised the eight different tasks involved in the competition. Just everybody got in there and worked hard at it and did the best we could do. It was real nerve-wracking being the only girls in, the, in there competing, and you were like, really? But it was, it was nerve-wracking for me, at least. Got a little tiring at the end, but it was nothing we couldn't handle. The teams with the three quickest times competed Sunday for a Ford Explorer, and although Wilcox High took the top prize, all of the students were winners. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's show, but trust me, we'll be back next weekend at the times you see on your screen. We'll have a preview of the activities at the Slick 50 race in Houston. We'll look forward at the upcoming postdoc bike season, and we'll have a profile of the John Force of the two-wheeled set, Steve Johnson. Join us then here on TNN. NHRA Today has been brought to you by Castrol Syntec, the new synthetic oil that protects in ways other oils can't. Promotional consideration provided for and a fee paid by this special offer from Diamond P. Just released. Here's another dramatic classic from Diamond P. It's and they walked away three. That's right. By calling 1-800-257-9191, you get the latest installment of this all-time best-selling series. Capturing motorsports' most perilous moments yet. Stock cars tangle and dumble on the oval high banks. Drag races experience terrifying infernos. Sprint cars dance too close and pay the consequences and much more. And in each breathtaking incident, the driver beats the odds. To order and they walked away free, call 1-800-257-9191. 91. Or send check or money order for $24.95 plus $4 shipping and handling. Be the address on your screen. That's 1 800 257 9191. NHRA Today is a presentation of Diamond P Sports. Inside Winston Cup Racing, next on TNN.